We work so you can play. How's this for a war jack? So today I'm gonna to be painting a box of Signar Long Gunners. This is actually a commission. We're gonna be using foundation paints for our base colors. So we're gonna start with Taucept Okra, Kemri Brown, Calfin Brown, Adeptus Battle Gray, Deneb Stone, Talern Flesh, Mordian Blue, a cup of water, some brushes, a tray for mixing our paints in, and some paper towel. I'm going to start with the Taucept Okra and use this as a base coat pretty much on the whole model. And because I'm just base coating very roughly, I'm going to use an old brush for this. And we're just going to apply that to the entire model because most of it's wearing the cloth that I want this color to be. Then we're going to start detailing the rest of the clothing with Calvin Brown. So we finished adding brown to the boots, some leather pouches, the scabbard for the sword, and also his hair and his goggles. So next we're going to go ahead and do use Deneb Stone for his little white cloak in the middle here, and Kemri Brown for the hilt of his rifle, and Adeptus Battle Gray for his lower boots, and just some extra details on the weapon and any metal details he has as well. So we'll start with the Deneb Stone. So next we're going to use the Camry Brown on the butt of the rifle. We're just going to carry that on up into the stock here as well. So next we're going to break out the Adeptus Battle Gray and just touch up the metal parts of the weapon, the bottom of the boots, and just a few random details as well, like the end of the sword on the back, etc. Right, so the boots and gun are now done, just got the handle of the sword to go. the handle done. I'm just going to pick out a few extra metal details. There's sort of like a little metal pad here, etc. We're going to just pick them out with the Adeptus Battle Gray as well. There we are. Okay, so we finished the parts with the Adeptus Battle Gray, the gun itself, his boots, parts of the sword, and just his little shoulder pad details. Next item we're going to paint, we're going to use Talern Flesh to paint his fingertips and his face. Face and fingers are now done. I'm gonna use Morty in blue now just to base coat his shoulder pads, knee pads, and the bottom of the cloak. And they have a little tavern type thing just hanging down. So we're done lining the knee pads, hip guards, shoulder pads, and the bottom of this with blue as well. Just have the last piece here to go across the back of the jacket, and then just to touch up the edge of the shoulder pads with the yellow so that they look more appropriate because I have smeared a little bit of the blue around. Okay, so we're just about ready to wash this model. We've just added a little Ian and Dark Sun just to outline the shoulder pads, knee pads, and the hip pieces, just to make them stand out a little more against the rest of the model. So we're gonna wash pretty much the entire model with Devlin Mud, and and do some highlighting, then just paint the goggles. This guy is just about done. Okay, so at this point we finished the foundation coverage on this model. Gone ahead and I've used it in Dark Sun as well just to accent the shoulder and knee pads. So now we're gonna go ahead and start giving this model a wash. We're gonna be using three washes for this. For most of the model, I'm gonna be using Devlin Mud. I'll use Griffin Sepia on the skin areas and Bad Eye Black on his boots. So we'll start with the Devlin Mud because that's gonna cover the most. We want a large, soft bristled brush for applying washes because it'll soak up a lot of wash and just let you kind of get it all over the place. I'm gonna use the Devlin Mud on his hair as well. If you end up with an area where it looks like there's too much wash, you see like in here we've got a little bit of a puddle, just take a clean brush and just kind of suck that out with the bristles. And you can either spread it around the area or just wipe it off on a paper towel. 
So our first wash is applied, and I've just cleaned up the extra pool here and here. There was just a little bit too much. Just gonna let this sit and dry for about five minutes or so, and then we'll go ahead and use the Griffin Sepia. All right, so the Devlin Mud's now dried on this model. You can see we have a decent amount of shading on them now, much more defined than he was before. So next, I'm just gonna add that in black onto the boots. I actually did some Devlin Mud right on the face. I don't think we really need to worry about putting some Griffin Sepia on there. The color's pretty decent already. Just gonna take our bat of black brush that onto the boots just to darken them up. Okay, that's done. So I'm just gonna set that aside to dry and we'll begin highlighting. Now we're gonna go ahead and just do some highlighting. I'm going to use Reaper Polished Bone mixed with a little bit of Flow Improver for his cloak. I'm going to use Reaper Tanned Leather with a little bit of Flow Improver for the back of his jacket and just some extra details on his clothing. I'm gonna use Reaper New Gold for his shoulder pad, knee pads, etc., and Reaper Sapphire Blue for the shoulder pads, the blue areas, basically. So we'll start with the blue first. I just need a couple drops, and I'm gonna add an equal amount of flow improver to this. Just mix it up with my brush. And just begin brushing this in. You can already see we've got a very nice highlighted shoulder pad with a little bit of blending to it. Shoulder pad with the crest on is a little bit trickier. So I'm doing the blue before the gold, so if I do get blue somewhere I don't want it, I can just touch it up with the gold while I'm highlighting that step. Okay, now there's the back of his jacket and the bottom of his cloak to go. What I'm doing is I'm not painting a highlight into the deepest areas, I'm just letting the washed darker blue already sort of take dominance there. The blue highlight is now done. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight his cloak with the polished bone. And again, I just need a little bit of this mixed with some flow improver. It's about a 50-50. This one I'm gonna focus on the outside edges and then the creases down the front. And that's done. So next we're gonna go ahead and mix up some tanned leather with some foam prover. So we're gonna start with the back of the jacket and just like the cloak on the front, I'm gonna focus on the two outside edges and then following the creases in the jacket itself to make them stand out a little bit more. So a little bit of detail on the back of the shoulders, up around his neck, and then just detail his chaps a little bit here. And just a little bit on his sleeve. There we are. Last thing we're gonna do is mix up a little bit of new gold with some flow improver and just outline all of his gold metallic details. So his shoulder pads, knee pads. I'm gonna start with the eagle on his shoulder pad. Just go over this lightly with the new gold. We just wanna make it pop a little bit, have a little more shine to it. Then go around the trim. And there's one shoulder pad done. the other shoulder pad finished. So those gold details are now all done. Last thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of Reaper Shadow Steel and just highlight the weapons with it as well to give them a more metallic look. We don't need very much of this one. I'm gonna put a little flow improver in here. I'm gonna use almost a dry brushing technique to apply this. I'm gonna wipe most of it off and then just bring it over the edges and then just along the barrel as well. Now we'll just do the back side of the weapon the same way. This is kind of a dry brush. I'm just using it to add a little bit of color to the area, or in this case, some metal flakes. So there you go, you can see the gun looks a lot more defined now, a little more reflective, a little more menacing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the hilt of the sword as well, just to make it look more metallic. Now he just needs some basing. Okay, so I've got here my watered down white glue. I'm just going to apply that to the whole base. Use an old brush for this. Basically, you just want to glob on your glue and spread it around. You don't want too much glue because then you end up with like little hills and such, which can actually be kind of soft to the touch and a little bit weird. Be careful not to get glue on the model itself. A little bit of flock up and around the boots actually looks okay because it just makes it look like they're more actually standing in their environment rather than on top of it. So that won't look out of place, but you don't want it like accidentally up on the bottom of the cloak or the jacket or something. So now that glue is completely on there, it's going to take our 
our large tub of flock, dip the model in, and shake it off. And he's based. Leave him alone for about half an hour or so to let the glue dry, but otherwise he's done. Okay, so there's the completed squad of six Signar Long Gunners. 